We're back! Hey, welcome to the first episode of the BG Show for 2022, people. Like, people didn't even think we were gonna make it to the middle of 2021. Oh my god, stop the damn underdog. <laughs> okay, sorry. All right, all right. All right. We oh, weren't gonna oh, make it! Ah! I'm like, oh my god, we made it! We made it, baby, we made it! <laughs> By the way, those shirts looking hot. Okay, you want one? <laughs> Listen, I'm your host, BG. That's Kelly over there, producer Dev in the mix. Our cameraman Burns, cameraman BA, we can't see you, but it's okay, we're gonna drag you in. It's Burns. And listen, we got some hot topics to discuss today, including, listen to this, Quebec wants to tax unvaccinated people, but is that going too far? Hold your, hold, hold your comments. Also, can you be friends with an ex-lover, or should you? Kelly, I know you got some thoughts on that, don't Ex-lover? I think we need to clear that up because ex-lover, because some of y'all don't ever contact me again. <laughs> but like oh, hold it, hold it, okay. Shots hold fired. those comments, Shots hold those fired. And listen to this, we got special guest actor Andrew Fung who's on the show to talk about his new hilarious CBC show. And finally, we're bringing back, get this, you're doing too much. And it's a good one this week. All right, folks, before we get into all of that, we need to do a few things. And we say this every single week. Subscribe to this channel, tap that notification bell, and follow us on all of our social media. Those details are in the where, the description below. All right, let's get into it. Everybody stretched out? Because everybody's talking about it. Whether you're for it or maybe you're against it, everybody seems to have a strong opinion about Quebec's proposed tax for people who choose not to get vaccinated. Is it going too far? That's what I wanna ask right now. Is this an ethical thing to do? So let's, let's just do a quick roundabout. How do we feel about this? Should people be taxed? Um, honestly. Yes or no? Vax tax, no. Okay. No. Okay. No, absolutely oh. not. Okay. Well, I wonder if Quebec's Premier Francois Legault is listening oh, to Oh, sorry, this. let me say it in French. No. Okay, so let's no. talk about why does he actually want to do this? Well, essentially what he's trying to say is that the unvaccinated people, and we're not trying to like divide people here, but he's saying though, the unvaccinated people, they're putting a, a burden on the healthcare network. And because of this burden, he says that these people should then pay the consequences, pay a penalty. But here's the thing, we know this is happening in Quebec and not everybody lives in Quebec, but when you take a look at the federal government and Justin Trudeau, right? He was asked this question, right, Dev? Mm -hmm. And he didn't fully answer yes or no if he would want to see this implemented. No, he said he'd need more information. So people are a little, they're unsettled by that answer. So I also want to bring in the stats here because I think it's important to talk about the facts. Right now, about 83% of Canadians have received at least one dose of the vaccine. 77% have received both doses as of January 8th. People are divided on this, on this situation. We know that we've heard at the provincial level, Doug Ford, for example, uh, the Premier of Ontario, Jason Kennedy, the Premier of Alberta, both of these leaders have said, hell to the no. Don't expect this to happen in their provinces. But we've also heard from federal leaders too, other federal leaders, like Jagmeet Singh. What did he say, Dev? He said, no. Well, no, he didn't. He said that, he said that it was a threat to uh, the universal health care system, which I agree with. That's why I'm against it. And it wasn't just him. Aaron O'Toole, the leader of the Conservatives, also entered the chat, and obviously we knew what he was going to say, which was also... Sorry, did he say no? <laughs> he said no. <laughs> okay. He said no. But here's here, take this in, take this in. You know what this conversation has done, though? It actually has, like, ticked up the number of people who uh, booked appointments to get vaccinated. It has. So is that what made it happen or was it the the surge in everyone they know getting it? Because I think it was a scare tactic. I think this is a big this is hearing that you could potential face a harsh penalty for not being vaccinated. Like, would that not drive but, you to go get the shot? On top of that, they also said that you couldn't enter liquor stores or marijuana That's stores. what it is. Any substance that you enjoy for social gatherings, that kind of thing, it's an inconvenience if you can't go get them yourself. Well, and also people are using substances like alcohol and cannabis more now during the pandemic than they were before, yeah. right? So like people have fallen into a routine where like maybe if you weren't mm. a drinker before the pandemic, you might be a drinker now, wow. smoker, that kind of thing. I think that's a good point. But on top of all of this, I think what everybody's wondering is if we set this precedent, like if this were to go, go through in Quebec, for example, when does it end? Yeah, what's the, what's what's the, the end, end game? What's, what's the, the end, end game? game, yeah. And we asked this question on the streets. Like people had a lot to say. Run the clips in terms of what they had to say. Let's go. So basically the Quebec government is like uh, contemplating taxing people who choose not to get vaccinated. Why? Because they want people to get vaccinated. It makes, it makes no sense. It's, they want to get vaccinated, that's their choice. What happens in Ontario, Quebec always has to do something different. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like, it's 
their way how like that they are separate i think like to make everyone safe it's fine like you should get vaccinated i, I think it's kind of like discriminatory against people mm. what if that were to happen here in ontario like what if doug ford decided to go that route i think that would cause or like stir a lot of chaos yeah. so i don't think it's a good idea it's stupid because the people who mistrust this are the people who have the little, have the least amount of resources, who can't afford to miss work, who don't have paid sick some, days. Some of the people. I some think there people, are some people who are being willfully ignorant about it, 100%, because I don't think we can still use the argument like, what is this thing gonna do to me? Right. 80, like nearly 80% of Canadians have gotten two doses and right. it, there hasn't been mass amount of deaths. Like people are alive. Correct, 100%. Thriving. But like when we're talking about the general rule of things, like what I wanna know is that do you think taxing unvaccinated people is going too far. Yeah. Like we have to ask that question. And what I want to know are your thoughts right now. So drop those thoughts in the comment section right now. All right, listen, I love that we got a little bit heated. So should we switch gears? I might get mad about this one too. Are we going to switch it up? All right, we're going from one thing to another. Let's lighten the mood and spill the tea and stir up some drama because we love a bit of drama on this show. Can you be friends with an ex lover? Oh, hell no. Kelly, hold it. Hold it. <laughs> I joke. Yes or no? No. You're going to say no? No. Okay. Deb? Yes. Yes. Burns. Depends. No, it's no, yes, yes or no. Or no. Yes, yes or no. Yes or no. I was going to say. yes or no question. Yes. No. We need it's to hear yes or, no. yes or no. Question. Burns. Yes or no. Burns. Yes or no. Every situation is different. Yeah, yes or no. I don't know. Clearly, there are people who have. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. No, What's no. your answer? What? <laughs> Okay, babe. Follow no. Back. Okay. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. But I'm gonna hold off why I'm gonna tell you why. There is a way to make it work. So Dev Burns, I'm gonna give you a moment to, to talk about it. Because we've seen celebrity examples. Like let's talk about Mariah Carey and Nick Cannon. They're friends? They got the twins. Yeah, they're actually hella cordial. Like they're cordial friends. and friends are different things. When I know, I agree. Because a mother will do anything for her kids. So you think if kids are involved, then it's a different story? Because yes, because usually when kids are involved, you either have a bitter baby mom or you have somebody who wants to co-parent. But you have a bitter baby dad sometimes too. Let's uh -huh. also you have a yeah, you have a bitter baby whoever. Right. So and it has nothing to do with anybody but the other person. So clearly, you guys are not friends. If you're co-parenting, it's because you guys both care about the child. So Brad Pitt and Jennifer Aniston. Right. And honestly, if no they kids. Be friends. Yeah, but they got no. But they're still friends. Right. So that's I'm my saying, point. There's no kids. Christine, celebrity not... relationships don't count because people do things. No, for but that's show. a good way to get examples. You know examples, who are though? really, really good friends people. and they do Everybody. have a kid, who? but their child is grown. Lenny Kravitz and Lisa Bonet. Oh, Besties. that's Zoe a good Kravitz one. Lenny Kravitz is an adult woman. There's no need for them to be friends. They are friends. Lenny Kravitz, okay, they just broke up, so maybe not a good example, but Jason, her second husband, Jason Momoa and Lenny Kravitz had matching friendship rings, okay? Mm. Matching bestie rings. So it can it can work. Okay. I have faith. So work. Burns, I want to hear your take, because you said you said yes. Yeah. So why yes? In the Let's in get the, the man's take. In the this. perfect world, it takes a certain level of maturity. Okay. But I think people can be. I've seen it before. Okay, so what okay. Understand. I appreciate if you, if it. If it ends, yeah, where both sides agree that it's not working. But out. what if it was okay? So what heterosexually? If it was your girlfriend, ex-girlfriend, she, she broke up with you. You would still be able to be friends with her. Depends what what happened. Why we broke up? Okay. Okay. The, so okay. and the reason why I don't think people can be friends with an ex-lover is because of boundaries. Once you cross a, a boundary in terms of having romantic feelings or an attraction to somebody, it's really hard to retract from that. It's really hard to step back and just be platonic with somebody because you get to know somebody on an intimate level and then retracting yes. or not sharing that part with that, them anymore makes it difficult and it also makes them awkward. You wanna know why? But also, you wanna know why? Tell me. Because you, you've seen their ecstasy face. Okay. Sissy face? What? Okay. Okay, oh, no. no. I, I, but no. also. Be honest. No. Be honest. No, be no, honest. no, 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 no. But also. No, you've, got, you've, you've brought it there. But that's not the end of Let what me, I'm saying. Okay, end of what you're saying. Because I want to jump the in end here. end of what I'm saying is also, maybe you're friends after you guys break up. But once somebody else enters a new relationship, you're not friends anymore. My ex got a new girlfriend. We're not friends anymore. Because we clearly did not have the same understanding of what this friendship was. Where you were crossing boundaries with me and then entertaining somebody else. No, like that's not a friendship. See, that's, that's a good point. Personal. And we actually heard that. We heard that on the Sorry, streets of people. Because it was. Personal situation. Because it was, and I hope he watches it. <laughs> <laughs> run the clips, run the clips. And then I'll give you my take. 
Absolutely. Can you be friends with your ex? Uh, yeah, I am actually. You're friends with your ex? ex? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Huh? It's not fun, but like, I have to be. <laughs> no. No? No. You said that with a straight face. Well, if it's my boyfriend, then yeah, but we're not gonna break up. <laughs> <laughs> never say never. How about you, Glenn? What do you think? Err, uh, no. No, you don't think you can? Why not? Um. <laughs> no. If you're done, you're I done. I would yeah. say if you're friends before and then you start dating, you can be friends. Oh. But yeah. if you go straight into dating, then yeah. it's like no. <laughs> Is he a good guy? Yeah. Rate him out of ten. Eleven. Oh. You're a real <laughs> one. She's a real one. No. <laughs> no. Okay. She said no. You said yes. Okay. Where do I start? Why no? Okay. Well, like. They're an ex for a reason, I mean. They kind of like did something to me, I wouldn't be friends with them. Um, if they left me, I really wouldn't want to be friends with them if they left me for a reason, so. You said yes. Okay, so if the ex like you up bad, then no, you can't be friends with them. Yeah. But like leaving on good terms, still hanging out with each other, I think that should be fine. But what if you get with somebody new? Will you still be friends with your ex? Yeah, their decision like okay. who they want to be with, my decision who I want to be with. Oh, what if the person you're with is friends with their ex? Would you be okay, okay with that? No. You, you wouldn't be okay with that? <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 that's a double standard. I guess it's like the same thing, but I guess, yeah, it wouldn't like make me feel comfortable. <laughs> is it? I appreciate the honesty though, eh? You didn't answer the question. Yeah, no, cut ties and that's that. <laughs> <laughs> you said what is done, yeah, it's, it's done. done. <laughs> Got it. I don't think you can be friends with your ex. I think if you see your ex in the mall, um, maybe in the drive-thru. Or if you kids. have mutual friends, because I run into people that... Or if you have mutual friends yeah, as adults, have functions. You're, gonna yeah. keep, you're gonna keep it classy. Why? Because you're never gonna allow somebody to, you know, to, 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 to make you walk out of yourself. Correct. Don't disturb you know your saying? own peace. You, you don't give somebody mm -hmm. that energy. You don't give somebody that power. So cordial is where I'm at. But you can't be friends. No. Like, it didn't work out, it didn't work out. Next, next reason why is that if you move on with the next person, how is that gonna work out? Insecurity plays a huge role, and while you're developing but a relationship, that's old exactly. no, no, no. But while you're developing a new relationship and a new bond with somebody, they're always gonna have the insecurity of this person already knows that about you. Why are you gonna confide in me? You could just go back to a comfortable source. But one hundred percent, you're creating a new space, a new atmosphere. So Correct. old energy shouldn't be lingering in there. So Leave that at the door. Keep it and pushing. Keep it moving. Push and pee. However, We're however, asterisk, if there are kids involved. Yeah. I do believe you can be friends and you should be friends. 100%. Why? Because I think it's so important. That's still cordial, I think. No, yes, I think it's cordial, but I think kids need to see more than cordial. I think kids need to see more than cordial. Because if you're going to do family events and go out to the zoo and stuff, you need to be friends with your ex. And Hold you're going to have your Hold new on. person, they're going to have the new no, 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 person. No, 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 they need to come. My okay, parents. let's add Devin this real quick. When I was growing up, they went through a terrible divorce. They were not friends at all, and that was brutal for me growing up. But now that I'm an adult, and my parents are friends, it's such a different relationship for my family. It's so different at Christmas, at birthdays. And I think that is so important for kids to have that stability. Just one more thing. Wrap it up. I will. Okay, because I don't know if this is getting wrapped up. If right. you have, I know, literally. <laughs> but if you have mutual friends, if you and your ex have mutual friends, you guys have been together, you guys make friends, either it's their friends, whatever, mm. whatever. It's hard to not go to those birthdays and not go to those things. You have, mm. you don't need to be, you don't need oh, to I'm be sweating. friends with your ex. <laughs> to attend though, and that's the problem. Now yes. you have your friend's birthday, right? You're being weird. Exactly, but it's not about you two. It's about no, your No, it's friend. about your friends. Exactly. Exactly. But can't you go to a party with one of your exes and just avoid your ex? How many people? Uh, no, like, because like, weird five. energy. No, 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 because that's weird. Weird energy, <laughs> weird, weird energy. <laughs> can you be friends with your ex? Answer that question in the comment section. No. The team is hot right now, but we are gonna try to simmer it down, or maybe not, because it's time to introduce our guest for the show. This week, today, Andrew Fung is on the show. You might remember him from his time on Kim's Convenience. Anybody watch that show? But listen to this, now he has his own show called Run the Burbs, which is hella funny. And by the way, he also shines a light on the experience of first-generation Canadians. Let's bring him in. Andrew Fung, welcome to the VG show. Man? Okay, Yo. first off, drip check. Sneaker check. <laughs> like I feel like, yeah, I feel like I've been outdone. So I'm just gonna just step no, away. No, no, <laughs> I'm just gonna step away. I, I, yo, I knew when I was meeting up with you, I was like, <laughs> okay, I've seen you with your Nike Fit checks. <laughs> I've seen you with those balloons. Yeah. Every photo, you're like doing this thing, and I was like, 
Okay, if I'm if I'm if I'm meeting with someone who's gonna bring the heat, I gotta bring the heat. Well, you brought the heat. You brought the heat, and we're so excited. Listen, I know so many people love you from the show Kim's Convenience. We're yeah. so excited to talk about your new show, yeah. Run the Burbs, right now on CBC. Welcome, Welcome to the neighborhood. Yeah. But before we even get to that, I mean, I want to get to know you a little bit more. You know? Yeah. Because we're on the streets here in Toronto, but you're not from the six. No, no, I'm not from. The, you're adopted the... home now. <laughs> I, I, even when I wanted to say the six, I felt like it came out so awkward. I am not from the six, <laughs> numeric six. I am from the four zero three of Calgary. <laughs> Your background is is Vietnamese. 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 Okay. Can we yeah. also clear up a lot of things? Because let me tell you something. One of, one of my best friends is Vietnamese, and yeah. he had to clear it up for me because I was so embarrassed. Yeah. People think it's pho. Yeah, it's not. Let them know. It's pho. Thank you. But it's the pho uh, is so <laughs> hard to get. And uh, so on Kim's Convenience, there's yeah. an episode where I say, I'm supposed to say pho, uh, yeah. but I say pho. Let's yeah. get some pho. And I got roasted. And I said, here's the difference though. I'm playing someone who, that's the joke. Right. He's saying it wrong. Yes. The joke is that he's saying it like all the people who say it wrong. Yeah. If I said it right, it, 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 it wouldn't it, land. Yeah, it wouldn't land the same yeah. way. Woo! What the hell? That was interference. I would have made that shot. Dude, that's burrito juice. It's like mustard ink and spaghetti sauce all in one. You can't even see it. It's the only thing I can see. What was it like working on Kim's Kim Dini? Nothing but joy. Like, yeah. I love every person on Kim's. It was like this special moment in time where we're like, we shouldn't be here. Like, yeah. are, we, are we making this? Yeah. I do want to ask you this question because, you know, it's no secret there was a lot of um, stuff that came out after the show had ended yeah. and there were a lot of like actors on the show who were, um, you know, they revealed some stuff that happened behind the scenes that they wanted yeah. to see more in terms of diversity behind the scenes. Yeah. Is that something you experienced or do you have any thoughts on that? With, you know, with my co-stars, everyone had a different point of view and perspective and journey. Yeah. And I, I have nothing but support for them. Yeah. And there were frustrations at times because we felt like on the front of the show, it was us, it was right. our faces. But behind the scenes, it wasn't our voices. Yeah. And so the really cool thing was, as all that happened, I'm making run the burbs. Yeah. So I get to, the greatest thing I can do is say, okay, okay, let's change that. Right. So it started with, you know, uh, Raki Mazaria, who plays my wife on the show, my yeah. co-star, was a writer on the show. Staffing mm. a diverse writer's room. Um, it was bringing on cultural consultants. Yeah. It was bringing on directors of color who are amazing. They were yeah. amazing guests, but giving them prominent roles, but then also giving them roles where they could, um, they were included in the development and the style and the tone mm -hmm. of the show. Okay. So what you're seeing is so collaborative. That's really it. Well, I that's what I was gonna that. say. I don't think people would know, but you yeah. got you got a you got an EP credit. <laughs> I run the burbs. Yeah. My man's an EP, people. Like, e can we, if I, sorry, I wish I had some flowers to give you. I apologize. E EP credit, but but also like not even in just like name. Like yeah. I got to, I was on the floor every single day working on the show, making decisions, working with wardrobe, yeah. casting the directors, and it genuinely felt like. Uh, between myself and my co-creator and, and our showrunner, we had the final say. One trip. We put in work. Yeah. Run the Burbs is about a, a Vietnamese South Asian family, and that yeah. in itself is this groundbreaking thing. 100%, um, like when was the, when, do, when did we ever see that on Canadian TV? We've never seen it. I get messages from people, they like, I never thought we'd see this family on TV. And that's um, so exciting to me. They are seeing um, a diverse family on TV yeah. and they're recognizing us in the world. Yeah. And that creates the star system in Canada. And I think that's what's so important, like seeing is believing. I want to talk more about Run the Burbs. Like, why should people watch the show? Oh. Firstly, this should watch And if they cause... haven't, are you just as funny or funnier? <laughs> uh, so if, if you haven't watched it yet, you should watch it because it's a funny show. It's a comedy. It's the show we need right now yeah. in the world we are in. You know, <laughs> it's not, hey, I don't know if y'all noticed, but uh, it's been a tough couple of years in the world. And so- <laughs> To say the least. <laughs> to say the least. Um, and so it, it is just a fun show where we just get to live our best life in the burbs. And, and where, did you grow up in the suburbs? 100%. <laughs> Rexdale, then Brampton. Wait, 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 wait. Rexdale, Rexdale. Is a symbol? What? 
Is that Rex the symbol Dale. for Rexdale? Yeah, if you are going to Rex, this is Rexdale. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> but if you're not from Rex, I don't <laughs> no, know if you're allowed no, no, to do no, it. No, no, I'll be no. honest. <laughs> I, I, I'm revoking that. I didn't want to. It was like, I have to give it back. The burbs are portrayed on TV in a very plain and mundane way. Yeah. But you and I know there are burbs where families of color yeah. are just living the life. Trust me. Right? Trust me. <laughs> Listen, people like to dog on Brampton, but you go to Brampton, you're getting some real, real <laughs> in there. You're getting driveway parties, big tents. You're getting big tents, you're getting <laughs> weddings, you're getting people. Yeah. Listen, people know. If you're from Brampton, you know. <laughs> Back about the basement jams. When we were growing up, we used yeah. to have basement jams. Like in high school, yeah. we used to go like, cause there were no like clubs or anything or like that. Like there weren't that many that you could access. So everyone would have basement jams. And then you would be like busting on like, um, what do you call it? The vents and everything. Uh, with the Sean Paul, big. Sean Paul's <laughs> Get Busy. No, no, not, not the go-to Sean Paul uh, Get Busy. I just want to say, <laughs> quit, quit banging on the roof <laughs> was what the father said. <laughs> You hear me now? This is the last time. That's a Calgary kid being like, okay, <laughs> that's how they have house parties out in Toronto. Yeah. <laughs> Bang on the roof. Say we're gonna see that in season two, guys. Yeah. Well, we got Cardinal yes. Fischel for the first episode. Oh so, yeah, yeah, no, that's huge. Yeah. Everybody loves Cardi. I mean, that man's a legend. I always envisioned a world where Cardinal, like, just he retired to the burbs. Yeah. He became a suburb dad. But yeah, that's the vibe of the show. It's really funny. It's, it's got a lot of heart to it, yeah. and it's about a family. And, and what I was important to me is often stories of, of color yeah. are often told from this perspective of trauma. Yeah. Pain. Like, there's always a struggle. Yeah. But then I want to see the kids of, of, of immigrants yeah. raising their kids mm. and how they do it. Because I <laughs> love my kids the way I didn't necessarily get love <laughs> growing up. What do you mean by that? Well, I think there's like a trope, there's this like thing of like Asian parents and, 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 and parents of color being really hard on their kids. Yeah, everybody and, can relate to that. Right? Yeah. And, and it dawned on me that when I had my kids, I gave them all this love. Yeah. And it, it, it made me realize that I'm loving my kids and, this, and, the, and, 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 and children of immigrants raise their kids with the love they didn't get yeah. in a different way. Uh, but a really cool thing happened. My, my mom and dad, their grandparents, would shower my kids with love. Shower them, spoil them. And you were like, where the hell did and this come from? Exact words. I said, Dad, yeah. where the hell did this come from? And he said, that wasn't my job. Oh. My job with you was to raise you right. Yeah. My job now is to spoil them. And I said, oh, oh Dad. He's like, and it made I me- I respect that. It made me realize they wanted to love us. That yeah. Way. They couldn't. They though. couldn't. They needed to raise us to be right. I'm so, so happy fun. for you, man. Yeah, yeah. Look, I see that we're in front of a, a bubble tea shop here. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. And uh, I've actually never had bubble tea before. When we were writing the show, yeah, we had written a coffee shop because every TV show needs a place. Yeah, coffee shop, a bar. Where you get together, yeah. it's that one staple. Yeah. So we written this coffee shop, yeah. and I said one day, I was like, "Why is it a generic coffee shop?" Yeah. And I said, "It should be a bu bubble tea spot." And giving the cultural specificity yeah. filled the show with detail. I yeah. said, "Okay." Who runs it? Okay, it's 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 a second generation Chinese woman. Yeah, she inherited the business from her parents. She's reclaiming yeah. the culture, like all those things, right? All right, well yeah. let's go give this a try. I'm excited. All right, so what should we get? I mean, that's that's you look, and you better give me the best one. Wow, they're all the best one. <laughs> it's it re it, the really cool thing about I find uh, bubble tea yeah. boba is that it comes down to like a per it's a journey. Yeah, it's an experience. Okay. Right? It's like a party in the mouth. Well, it is a party in the mouth. Everyone's banging on the roof, all right? So, <laughs> <laughs> I joke, I won't break your walls. <laughs> and so, what I love is like, the thing that often I think is daunting to people, yeah. they come in and see this big menu. Well, the great thing is, no matter what, it's gonna be good. All right, right I'm, gonna get, I'm gonna get your bubble tea on me. I got a degree in economics and business. So you never thought you did you ever think you were gonna be an actor on a national show? Comedy was the, the side the side gig. Comedy Whoa. was like for fun. Comedy was to help me be a be better public speaker. Wow. Right? Yeah. What did your parents say when you moved went into acting? They were really supportive. Yeah. And, and That's I, good. I had a different journey because I had done acting on the side, mm -hmm. but I was going to university. So my parents never saw acting as more than that's just a hobby that keeps them out of trouble. Yeah. 
But then I started inviting them to shows. Oh. And they started coming to my shows and being like, Andrew, you sold the place out. Yeah. Whoa. And I introduced my parents. Okay. My mom would stand up, yeah. wave at the crowd like this. <laughs> she felt like she was the queen. Yeah. Oh, oh thank you. This is yes. good. Oh, thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. Oh. Cheers right, to you, cheers Andrew. To you. Cheers. I wouldn't even make that. Oh, I wouldn't even make the balls to run through. Give him a heads up. <laughs> I was like, whoa. <laughs> All right, remind our viewers where they can watch Run the Burbs. You watch Run the Burbs on CBC. It's also streaming for free on CBC Gem. You get CBC Gem for free. And honestly, best enjoyed with a uh, bubble tea. Can't go wrong with that. Hey, Andrew, <laughs> thanks so much for joining us on the BG Show. Thank you so You're much, You're a real man. one, my guy. Thank you so much, brother. Okay, Andrew was a vibe. Any, we agree Andrew was a vibe? Mm -hmm. Yes, and like, what a cool concept that speaks to so many people. Yeah, I like it. Hey guys, make sure to go watch the show. Again, it airs on CBC. All right, now before we go, and we let y'all go, uh, we're bringing something back. We teased it in the beginning of the show. You're doing too much. And this week, we're looking at who else other than the man himself, Mr. Doug Ford, who may have had good intentions at the beginning. Remember the snowstorm we had earlier this week? Um, but he, he, I don't know, man, like... <laughs> Was it good intentions? But that's the thing, people were criticizing him for making it a publicity stunt, publicity stunt. <laughs> but either way, Doug Ford and his little shovel, okay, his best friend, <laughs> we'll just run it, run it for the people, let's go. The Premier is literally driving around in his pickup truck right now, helping pull stranded motorists out of snowbanks. Excuse me, you're doing too much. Dougie Dougie, teach me how to Dougie. Teach me how to... Somebody hey, teach him how hey, to Dougie. Cause all these, <laughs> I joke. Anyhow, that is a wrap. It's time to end the show. Listen, we have a lot of things coming at you this year, including some amazing Hennessy conversations, right Kelly? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That we can't even tease right now, you just have to keep it locked. And some just great content. News you can use is popping this year, like it is on fire, okay? And if you have any news stories, anything you want to share with us, anything you want us to look into, email us news at brandygonashow.com. This has been a blast. It feels good to be back. Uh, we should have poured some Hennessy to cheers, but it's okay. We are gonna do a BTS, meaning behind the scenes. And I think it's time we get a little Liddy to celebrate also our one year anniversary. One year, people! <laughs> one year! Here's to the next 10. Okay, here's to yes, the next cheers. 10. And a reminder, if you haven't yet, do it right now. Subscribe to this channel, tap that notification bell, and make sure to follow us on all of our social media. Those details in the description below. I'm your boy, BG. Can't wait to see you next week. Later, we love you for watching. Hey, BG Squad, thanks so much for checking out our channel. And listen to this, we have more great content for you, like this video right here, and this video right here. By the way, don't forget to subscribe to this channel right now, and tap that notification bell.